Hello students, today we are going to discuss the treatment of water by screening aeration and plain sedimentation process. Now students, why we want to treat the water? Is there anyone who had the idea that why we want to treat the water? We had already studied the quality characteristic of water in which certain parameters are not within the permissible limit. So, to make that parameters within the permissible limit, we want to treat the water. Now, there will be various process for the treatment of water. We will see one by one each and every process in detail. Okay. Now, there is a flow chart which is showing the different types of processes carrying out in the water treatment plant. First one is the screening. After screening, there will be the primary sedimentation tank. Okay. After that, there will be coagulation added with flocculation and secondary sedimentation. After which, there will be a filtration process. After filtration process, disinfection unit will be there for the disinfection of water. After disinfection, there will be a method of softening of water which will remove the hardness from the water. Okay. Now, after the removal of hardness, we will send this water to the various household units. Okay. Now, what are the various units? First one is the screening process. After screening, plain sedimentation will be there. After plain sedimentation, what will be there? That is the coagulation, flocculation and secondary sedimentation. After coagulation, flocculation and secondary sedimentation, there will be filtration unit. After filtration, disinfection unit will be there. And after disinfection, aeration unit will also be there. Now, if the water is highly polluted, so we will do the aeration process as the second process before the plain, sedimenta plain sedimentation to improve the efficiency of the plain sedimentation tank. Clear? Now, after disinfection and aeration, last process which we are going to discuss is the softening process which will remove the hardness of the water clear now we will see each and every steps and the processes in detail starting with the screening process clear now what is screening screening is generally done to remove the heavier impurities from the water like plants trees stones animals etc and it is generally carried out for surface water it is generally carried out for surface water now what are the types of skin which we are using in the screening process? There are two types of screen. First one is the coarse screen, which is also known as trash screen. It is generally made up of bars of 25 mm dia, which is having center to center spacing of 20 to 100 mm. Now the next one is the fine screen or mesh screen, which is having opening size less than equals to 10 mm. So, these are the two types of screen which we are going to discuss in the screening process. Okay. Now, screening is generally adopted for the surface water which we had already discussed. Now, why we need to provide the inclination to the screen? Because to remove the impurities efficiently from the water as well as to slow down the velocity of water so that all the impurity will settle down at the bottom of the container that's why we want the inclination of the screen okay now if inclination is provided then the efficiency of screen gets increased due to inclination provided to the screen cleaning of screen gets much easier because of the inclination now what will happen if more and more impurity will come into that water and will choke the screen now what will happen suddenly the level of water before screen will increase and after screen the level of water goes on decreasing so what will happen the head loss value will increasing now if more and more impurity gets deposited hl increases it means that head loss increases and hence the quality of water passes through screen gets reduced and hence cleaning of screen is done it means that hl will indicate that the cleaning time is reached then we need to clean that screen before using it to the other purification of water clear now the velocity which is before the screen is u and which is after the screen is v now what will be the formula of head loss it will be equals to 0 0.0729 v square minus u square now 
the velocity v is greater than the velocity u how can we get that data that v is greater and u is smaller suppose that here the surface area is this now we know that q is equals to av from the continuity equation now if discharge is constant velocity is inversely proportional to area if we increase the surface area due to inclination what will happen velocity will decrease now after screening again the surface area will decrease now when the surface area will decrease what will happen velocity will increase so we want a smaller velocity or very low velocity before screen so that all the particles or all the impurities will removed from that water clear now velocity through screen should be less than 0.8 to 1 meter per second clear now the next process will be the aeration process now why we need to do the aeration of the water to carry out the oxidation of dissolved organic matter if we carry out the oxidation of dissolved organic matter before plain sedimentation tank the efficiency of plain sedimentation tank will increase okay now in aeration water is brought in intimate contact with air it means we will make the contact of water with the oxygen to remove the undesirable dissolved gases like co2 and h2s which is the main gases from the waste okay now it is also done to add oxygen in the water why we need to add oxygen in the water to carry out the oxidation of dissolved organic matter now aeration improves the color taste and odor of the water that will be the aeration process okay now we will see how can we do the aeration process and what are the various methods of aeration okay starting with the gravity aeration now what is gravity aeration it is done by successive rise and fall of water okay now what will happen here we just allow the water to move to successive rise and falls like this okay now what will happen in gravity aeration water is made to pass through successive rise and fall due to which it gains oxygen from the atmosphere when the water is coming from top to bottom due to negative pressure it will absorb all the atmospheric oxygen okay now after the absorption absorption of all the oxygen from the atmosphere what will happen the aeration process will takes place in that water which is clearly shown in this figure okay now this is known as gravity aeration because water is flowing under the influence of gravity only clear next one is the fountain aeration now in fountain aeration what will happen the water is detained in a pond from which it is thrown at a high pressure where it is thrown it is thrown to a particular height and during falling down of discrete spherical water particle when the water particle comes from top to bottom what will happen it absorbs air it will absorb all the atmospheric oxygen it will absorb all the atmospheric oxygen and bring all the atmospheric oxygen into the pond now when the dropping water will make the oxygen coming with that water which is falling from top to bottom what will happen aeration of that pond will takes place okay now this is known as fountain aeration because here the aeration is carried out by fountain process okay that is known as fountain aeration next one is the mechanical aeration now what is mechanical aeration in mechanical aeration water is stirred through a rotating mechanical stirrer water is mixed through a rotating mechanical stirrer it is known as mechanical stirrer okay now what will happen when we rotate the water with the mechanical stirrer due to which it sucks the atmospheric air line above and gets aerated due to negative pressure it will absorb all the oxygen from the atmosphere and create their or done their aeration process that is known as mechanical aeration clear now the last but not the least it is the one of the best method of aeration which is known as diffused aeration now what will happen in diffused aeration in diffused aeration compressed air is blown inside the aeration tank through an air compression machine in this tank compressed air will be sent by the help of compression machine 
and the bubble will be created and this bubble will add oxygen in that water due to which aeration process will be carried out inside that water body this is the one of the most important principle of aquarium okay if you had seen any aquarium in that aquarium there will be water bubbles and through that water bubble aeration process will taking place in that aquarium clear to all now here all the aeration process is completed now we will see the another process that is known as plain sedimentation now what will happen in the plain sedimentation just listen to me in the screening process we had removed the larger impurities from the water as well as in the aeration process we had remove all the larger organic matter from that water now we want to remove the very fine impurities that is of the particle size less than 0.2 mm for which we will need to do the plain sedimentation process okay now in plain sedimentation process we generally kept water in a large container and allow them to settle under the influence of gravity by providing them with sufficient detention time when the particle will settle down we will remove that particle from the tank and we will send that water for the next process that is the sedimentation aided with coagulation and flocculation now sedimentation is the settling of particles in water due to particle size specific gravity of particle viscosity of water as well as acceleration due to gravity now you all know that the particle will settle under the influence of gravity with a constant velocity and that constant velocity will be known as terminal velocity okay now it is known as terminal velocity in fluid mechanics but in environmental engineering we will call this velocity as settling velocity what we called as it is called as settling velocity now what is settling velocity settling velocity is that constant velocity under which the particle will settle down under the influence of gravity only clear now we can calculate the settling velocity of particle by using stokes law and stokes law is valid only for the particle size less than 0.2 mm diameter clear now settling velocity according to stokes law is given by rho g d square upon 18 mu g minus 1 where rho is the density of water which is in 1000 kg per meter cube okay rho is the density of water which will be equals to 1000 kg per meter cube now g is the acceleration uh, due to gravity which will be equals to meter per second square now d is the diameter of particle diameter of particle in meter in meter mu is the dynamic viscosity mu is the dynamic viscosity and its unit is newton second per meter square or it is equivalent to kg per meter second clear now g is the specific gravity g is the specific gravity of that particle clear now if in place of dynamic viscosity if kinematic viscosity is given then the formula will be equals to gd square upon 18 mu g minus 1 because we know that nu equals to mu by rho okay now when we use this formula that is mu by rho equals to nu then the settling velocity will be converted in terms of kinematic viscosity now 99.99% time this formula is used for the settling of particle and if temperature is given if temperature is given then we have to use these three formulas but these are rarely used in the environmental engineering okay now if the diameter is less than 0.1 mm we have to use the formula vs equals to 418 d square 3t plus 10 upon 100 into g minus 1 here t is the temperature now if diameter is in the range of 0.1 to 1 mm we have to use the formula that is 418 d 3t plus 10 upon 100 into g minus 1 now if diameter is greater than 1 mm we have to use the settling velocity formula that is 1.8 under root gd into g minus 1 but these three formulas are rarely used that's why we don't need to remember this formula we have to use only this formula that's why we need to remember only this formula that is the stokes law clear now we will see how the plain sedimentation process works suppose that 
सपोज दैट वी हैव अ पार्टिकल हेयर सपोज दैट वी हैव अ पार्टिकल हेयर अ पार्टिकल ऑफ वॉटर सपोज दैट वी हैव अ पार्टिकल ऑफ वॉटर हेयर क्लियर नाउ अनदर पार्टिकल ऑफ वॉटर विच विल बी हेल्ड हेयर नाउ दिस इज द हाइट ऑफ द सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक दिस इज द हाइट ऑफ द सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक and this is the length of the sedimentation tank generally the sedimentation tank will be rectangular in shape with slightly capped inclined at the bottom to remove the sludge from the bottom okay now the particle which will be travel from this to this distance that is the particle which is traveling a distance of h meters will be known as v not the particle which will be traveling a height of h meter then that particle velocity is known as v not that is the overflow rate loading rate or superficial velocity okay that particle velocity will be known as superficial velocity loading rate or overflow velocity and it is indicated by v not okay now the velocity which by which the particle will be traveling a distance from this to this that is the length distance that velocity will be known as horizontal velocity that is known as vh that is known as horizontal velocity or flow through velocity one important parameter is there that the time taken by this particle to reach from this point to this point that is to travel a distance of h meter will be exactly same as the time taken by the particle to travel this l distance okay so time is same for both the particle to travel a distance of h as well as l meter okay now v not is the time taken by the particle v not is the velocity of particle to travel a distance of h so we just write here as v not equals to h upon t that is the distance upon time clear now vh is the horizontal velocity it will be equals to l upon t here t is same so we just write it as h upon v not which will be equals to l upon vh now time is same for both the process so we will equate both this equation and we get the equation as h upon v not equals to l upon vh which is the one of the most important equation of plain sedimentation tank okay now another formula derivation is discharge equals to volume divided by time now volume of rectangular tank is length into width into height upon time now we know that h upon t is v not so we just write it as h upon t equals to v not so v not will be equals to discharge upon l into b and it is also known as discharge upon surface area that will be the most important formula of plain sedimentation tank that is overflow velocity or overflow rate will be equals to discharge upon surface area now we know that l upon t will be equals to vh so vh will be equals to q by b into h okay now we want the efficiency of this plain sedimentation tank so efficiency is what it will be the ratio of output upon input into 100 okay now what is output here the settling of particle for the settling of particle we will take the settling velocity so we just write in the numerator that is the settling velocity vs divided by the input velocity and the input velocity will be v not that is the overflow rate or the loading rate so we just divide the settling velocity by v not into 100 we will get the efficiency in percentage okay now what is the procedure of plain sedimentation tank okay now the water which will enter from the aeration process or from the screening process will allow to enter from this means now all the water which will be traveling by the inlet chamber will allow to strike this baffle wall this baffle wall now after striking this baffle wall water particle will travel like this and will reach here now when the water particle will reach here that water contains impurities in it okay now that water will slightly move slowly towards the 
कन्वेयर बेल्ट दिस इज द कन्वेयर बेल्ट ओके नाउ दैट वॉटर विथ इम्प्यूरिटी विल मूव ओवर द कन्वेयर बेल्ट एंड विद द क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट ऑफ दिस कन्वेयर बेल्ट वॉटर एंड इम्प्यूरिटी विल ट्रेवल लाइक दिस नाउ ऑल द वॉटर विल बी रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम द सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक फ्रॉम द एफ्लुएंट वेयर लाइक दिस okay and all the impurity will retain in the cups which is formed here okay now during the downward journey of this conveyor belt all the particles or all the impurity will be settled down here now due to this flight scraper all the impurity will comes like this and will allow to settle at the bottom of the sedimentation tank when sufficient quantity of impurity will present in that uh, sedimentation tank we will open this sludge withdrawal gate and we will take all this impurity from that okay now that is the plain sedimentation process clear to all now we will see the various notes of plain sedimentation tank that is the overflow rate we not here generally kept as 500 to 750 liter per hour per meter square for plain sedimentation and when we add coagulation that is the coagulants okay then the v not will be increased to 1000 to 1250 liter per hour per meter square now the horizontal flow velocity that is the vh will be generally kept as 0.15 to 0.9 meter per minute clear now the sedimentation tank should be designed for maximum daily flow it is the one of the important parameter that the sedimentation tank should be designed for maximum daily flow now the width of sedimentation tank is generally kept as 10 to 12 meter and length should be less than four times of width okay that is almost 40 meter now depth of sedimentation tank is 3 meter and depth of tank does not affect the efficiency of the tank because efficiency will be equals to vs upon v not into 100 and v not will be the ratio of discharge upon surface area which will be equals to length into width that's why depth depth of tank does not affect the efficiency of the tank okay that is all about the screening aeration and plain sedimentation process thank you very much students